H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, am I audible? Hello. Yes. Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah, we can hear you. OK. OK, fine. Um, now, before starting the training, I would like to understand the basic understanding of the ETL. What is your background so that I can prepare myself to start from the training? Uh, OK, so I ca can I speak? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, actually, I'm a working professional and uh, in my company, there's an opportunity for uh, Informatica development like I'm working as an SQA right now, like, uh, but I really want to go for a development in Informatica. So I wanted to brush up like the basic skills. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I'm here. OK, so uh, do you have any basic understanding of the SQL? A uh, little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Uh, what about the other one? Oh, are you the only participant right now? I think so. The, uh, I can see some. Yeah, I could see. Mm. It's okay. I think they are not the real participants. That's fine. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Vaishali, for the introduction. So. Yeah. Uh, so, what is your actual background? Uh, actually, um, uh, I had a little background in India, and then I came here, and I have a little bit of a gap in my career. But mm -hmm. now I've also uh, now I've started as an SQA, like uh, where I have to do like data validation and everything. But I mm -hmm. saw I I saw the opportunity for Informatica development in my company, so I really want to go there and explore uh, where I can reach, you know. So I really want to make sure that where I am, I, I, I have a little bit of knowledge, like, um, you know, testing, uh, manual mm -hmm. testing, you can say, okay. but uh, not mm -hmm. like, uh, and I also um, did some uh, uh, Selenium course before in H2K for, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to go for um, automation. So yeah, I have a little bit knowledge, but not like, I, I don't have any much experience, you can say, like, yeah, so, fine. Fair enough. That that's yeah. fine, Vaishali. So I just yeah. wanted to like uh, the introduction because so that I can start from where. So that is the okay. main reason. Apart from that, nothing. Okay. So now I got it. So I need to start from the basics. See, yeah. prior to the Informatica, um, Informatica is uh, is a very easy tool. Anybody can learn. Okay. Okay. Anybody yeah. can learn. It's very easy. But for learning the Informatica, my uh, prior advice is to have a little basics of SQL and a little bit of data warehousing concepts because all these will play a crucial role in uh, building the informatica development so what okay. i do is so i will start with a little bit of basics on okay. informatica and then as we evolve through the different uh, parts of informatica i will be touching base both the informatica concepts along with those general AS concepts so okay. uh, i will i will be also try to share the real project experience so that you will be well aware of ahead to give the okay. proper interview question and answers okay so that okay. it will be easy for you not only to learn from the basics but at the same time you can get a very good advantage at the okay. end of this sessions i mean all the informatica sessions i will okay. try to teach you about performance tuning so i don't uh, teach the performance tuning at the initial uh classes but i will take the performance tuning of informatica at the end of the classes what so is that it is, what is that performance uh performance is nothing but how good you develop your code oh okay okay how okay. good you develop a code uh, such a such a way that the code is running fine without hampering uh the performance of the environment okay so that is nothing oh. but the performance tuning. 
so it could be your informatica code it could be the database it could be the hardware or it could be the other software that has been uh, correlated with respect to the informatica so everything comes as a part of the performance journey so okay. that is one of the major parts of the development it's not only you develop the code at the same time you need how good your code has gone into the production so okay. i hope you know right about the build the test and the production yeah, yeah yeah so there are different phases of sdlc life cycle so performance tuning plays a very crucial role so i will teach that at the end of the class okay okay but right now i will start with the basics so that you will get a decent understanding so before entering into the informatic i think you know about the etl because you had a little bit of uh, yeah, yeah yeah extract uh, transform extract yeah. okay yeah yeah one minute hold on okay now uh, are you able to see my screen yeah yeah i can okay fine good Okay, say so my agenda for the class, I will start with the general concepts with terminology, okay? So okay. before learning the informatics, you should know certain jargons. So what we call as in technical terminology, okay? These technical terms one should aware so that it's easy to crack the interviews at the same time. It's very easy for you to observe when you try to do the development. And then uh, when I say Informatica, Informatica is a corporation, it's a company. So this company produces a lot of products. Okay. okay, now here in this class, I will be able to teach only on the power center. Okay, Informatica okay. power center, we call it as IPC in a okay. shortcut way. Okay? okay, so this is nothing bad. So that is the, my second topic. So I will teach about the architecture and the various components involved in the architecture see as a developer you don't require too much of knowledge on the architecture okay but you should know the terms because like a terms called the mine node uh, integration service repository service how mm -hmm. does integration service acts and repository service act so we are not supposed to share blank faces when somebody people from the database side or the persons who, who in charge take care of the administration ask all these questions so that's the reason why I will be covering a little bit of topics on the architecture and components. And then the various client tools. This is where the real development starts. Mm -hmm. The IPC client tools. So there are so many client tools available on the Informatica, like Mapping Designer. I, I will teach one by one later. Okay, so we will explore one by one in the client tools. And then this is the heart of the Informatica called the Workflow Manager. Mm -hmm. So this is also a part of the development. And then this is the advanced concepts. So here I talk about the performance. So if I talk, if you teach about the performance right now, it doesn't make any sense for you because we are in the process of learning from the basics. So once we understand the complete topic, then it's easy for us to deep dive into the particular area and then look into the, uh, where the issue lies and how to improve so that our code is fine. We can able to deploy into the production. So mm -hmm. this is what in term about the index, okay? What I will be covering through the Informatica Power Center. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, um, may I know what is your understanding of ETL? Um, okay, so ETL, as I, uh, I mean, I also been to a lot of YouTube channels and everything. So what mm -hmm. I understand is extract, transform, and load. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for example, um if there is a company uh, they take uh, data from different sources they extract data from different sources it can be a file it can be like from database or it can be like video any anything data in any form they just collect mm -hmm. extract from different sources and they transform it they transform it so that um you know it will be like uh, for any purpose like uh, business consultants what what they need like for uh, there are so many purposes so according to that they transform the data and load in uh, load the data in the warehouses so that okay. they can be used for business analyst and uh, you know analytics purpose that, that I, okay. yeah absolutely you have a very decent knowledge about uh, the ETL say for an example why do we need uh, to go for informatica why not with other so uh, what is the advantage okay. of this informatica and why not with? so i will start with this so that you will get a fair understanding 
C. Okay. Without having an informatica also, we can do this ADL in the form of the raw code with the help of PL SQL, T SQL. There are so many programming languages. Let's hope you might have heard about uh, Oracle. Mm. So Oracle yeah. is a company where yeah. it, it's about SQL and PL SQL. PL SQL is a procedure language. Okay. okay. The same okay. way Microsoft SQL Server also supports SQL and T SQL. They call okay. it as a transaction SQL. So every vendor or a company has come up with its own uh, language so that it can able to handle these ETL capabilities. But okay. why people are preferring towards the graphical user interface? So we call it as GUI. GUI. Okay? Mm -hmm. GUI. So this is uh, all these tools are nothing but graphical user interface. See, the main advantage of GUI tools is nothing but to decrease the operational cost. Okay. Say for an example, you have deployed a PL SQL code. Okay, of mm -hmm. a thousand lines into production. Into production. Okay. Now you got an issue. Say as a developer, it's your mm -hmm. responsibility to find out where the issue lies. So. Mm -hmm. How much time it will take for you to look into the thousand lines of code and identify that the issue and then rectify. So there will be a lot of business disruption, okay? Operations mm -hmm. disruption that will actually create a lot of problem for the mm -hmm. business. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is the main agenda for all the organizations right now existing in the market to go for GUI. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that they do not want to use the PL SQL, but they are using all these PL SQL and T SQL codes in order to uh, do certain transactions and capture that information and again write the logics. Okay, that is the main difference. Now, mm -hmm. when it comes for ETL extract, transform, and load, mm -hmm. there are so many vendors uh, playing a crucial role in the market, like IBM. You know, right? IBM Corporation is a very yeah. good company. Now they have a own product called Data Stage. It also supports ETL. Now, when it comes to SAP, SAP product, they do yeah, have yeah. called body. Yeah, body. So business objects data integrator is nothing yeah, but yeah. an ETL tool. Like yeah, Informatica yeah. is one more mm -hmm. company. They have come up with Informatica Power Center. Okay. So like there are so many companies coming up with their own ETL capabilities. Like Oracle, they have come up with O B I E. Okay, Oracle Business Intelligence. So they do have their own product. So out of all these products, every product is doing the decent. But Informatica is the leading market in the tool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it is. Uh, I think somebody has joined. Hello, may I know who is joined? Hello. Uh I saw the name and it's gone now. It's went away. Okay, it's fine. Fair enough. That's fine. Okay. Now, among all these uh, vendors with their ETL capability tools, Informatica is one of the powerful leader in the market. Okay. okay. Why people are uh, preferring Informatica over the other vendors? It's flexibility. It's easeability. Okay. Yeah. It's um, it's like uh, we can integrate multiple components very easily. And then mm -hmm. it's uh, it's it, it's giving a very good advantages for other tools in order to identify the problems at uh, at early stages so that we can minimize the production costs. Okay, mm -hmm. that is the main reason for most of the companies they are preferring towards entering into the Informatica. Okay, okay. so okay. may know I mean do you have any fair knowledge like in in, in your company which version of Informatica are they using? uh informatica power center only i heard no. informatica okay, power, power center. center okay but there are a lot of versions oh uh, that that's I fine know. okay that's fine fair enough yeah. i think right now most of the companies are using the versions of 8 9 and 10 okay 10 is the latest versions right now okay hope maybe 9 or 10 one of these versions your company might be using now in these two versions we don't have a very i mean uh, the architecture is almost resembles the same but a little bit of added advantages with the 10 with new developer flexibilities okay oh. but regarding the architecture wise there was no difference it was the same now okay. until okay and that is the main reason why most of the companies are preferring informatica power center mm -hmm. over the other now informatica is like a company power center is one of the products 
so okay. like that informatica also gets so many products like power exchange uh, data quality master data management there are so many things with respect to so many uh, business uh, requirements okay now okay. as of now this power center is absolutely useful in order to um, integrate different types of data sources and then transform and then load into the database okay yeah. now yeah. um did you come across any elt mechanism recently um uh, yeah in my company they are also working in sap board what you just called it right so mm -hmm. uh, what they are doing they are just uh, moving their uh, applications from sap to informatica there are migration is going on so oh, that is mm -hmm. Yeah, so 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 that all that also I I you know come across like uh, like ETL what you're calling SAP board. They uh -huh. have uh, so yeah a little bit not much but I, because I'm really new to this company so I don't much know about all the no. all of the things. Okay, but, fine. Uh, Fair. Yeah. So no worries. Now okay. Now there is one more mechanism called ELT. So what is the basic difference between these two? Okay, it is oh. very very uh, ELT mechanism. That's what I asked. Oh, yeah, that was a, a few. I mean, it was before it was like ELT. It it load first and then transform, but it takes okay. lot of memories, that lot of memory in database. So that's why they just you know uh, prefer. Um, I mean, tra extract, transform, and then load. That's the difference mm -hmm. in between between yeah. ELT and ETL. Absolutely, it all depends on how the business wants. Okay, say yeah. for an example, if I'm a business driver, I always look for my money. So money. why should I waste my money? Absolutely, everybody looks about the cost. See, yeah. the basic advantage with EDL is it increases cost at the same time. It provides a lot of flexibility and added compliance requirements. Say. Yeah. You are in America. I'm in European region. There will be somebody working from the Asia Ocean region or Australia and New Zealand. Say for an example, mm -hmm. every geographical area is having its own compliance requirements. Mm -hmm. In the US, we might have heard about HIPAA, right? Health Insurance uh, yeah. Portable yeah. Act. Right? Like there are so many compliance, like uh, credit card compliance requirements, GDPR mm -hmm. compliance requirements, etc. So. Mm -hmm the concept of etl allows all these compliance to be applied at the early stages so that there is a lot of data security okay oh, so oh. all the unnecessary data doesn't comes over here it comes mm. only to relatively necessary data and then on top of that we apply the business logics right transform and then we load into the necessary database or data warehouse whatever may be the case okay yeah. that mm. is the basic advantage of etl over yeah. ELT. now yeah this requires a little bit of additional cost okay. now at the same time the elt adds a lot of flexibility when i say flexibility it doesn't standardize the data it doesn't cleanse the data what it is it it um, integrates different types of data sources and mm -hmm. put it into called a river or a lake or a sea or a ocean what we call it as a data lake at the moment okay mm -hmm. Okay. And this data lay, there are a lot of businesses operating. So not only one particular business, right? When we are developing this ELT mechanism, it is for the entire enterprise for the company. So let's say for an example, I am from the finance and you are from the sales, and there is one more person from the marketing. Now the marketing guy would like to have its uh, his or her own data from the data lake and he does not want all other data lakes okay i mean okay. the other okay. departments so he wants to leverage his own mechanism and his own information for that this elt helps a lot okay okay, okay. so that so it, it all depends on how the business wants to operate and perform based okay. on that we will be driven okay? okay it could be okay. either with the e etl or elt, ELT. but okay. At the moment, the informatical power center only deals with the ETL. That's it. ETL. It doesn't deal with the ELT. Okay, ELT. it's not. Okay. It's not with the ELT. It's only the ETL. Okay. Okay. So, do you have any queries as of now? Uh, no, that's it. But I mean, uh, uh, the the question is like in my mind, like ETL and ELT, uh, mm -hmm. which is superior? Which is superior? Which I mean, it depends yeah. on business. I understand, but superior mm -hmm. is like um, regarding money and cost effectiveness and everything. ETL is best, right? Um, I mean, uh, today's today's scenario. No. Uh, no, I can say ELT is the best. ELT because, is the best. 
uh, ELD is the best at the moment because it adds a lot of flexibility, right? So now, most of the businesses would like to go for the flexibility rather than uh, for cost. Okay, see, say for an example, uh, I, I will talk about in 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 detail difference when we develop a particular map so that you will be aware. Why I why I said this uh, difference because if I standardize a data. And if you want to do a little bit of change, I need to do a complete change. It, in, it involves a lot of all mappings and the workflows to be changed. Okay, so okay. it involves time, it involves resources, etc., etc. A lot of cost will be added. But in the ELT, it is not the case. I am not going to change anything. I will be changing only whatever it is required for a particular subject area. So that's where most of the businesses would like to drive into the ELT mechanism rather than the ETL mechanism. Now, when in, when it, anyway, you will be dealing with the analytics soon, right? Now, yeah. slowly, all these will be uh, transformed into the ELT so that it is a combination of both structured okay. as well as the unstructured, okay? We can combine both together. Okay, so to load the... To, to load the data, I mean, when you extract uh, from everywhere and to load the data, the data will be very big, right? So, yeah, absolutely. It, the, so cost will be there also to store no. it in a database, no? No. Nowadays, most of the people are not storing on a databases. They are entering into the cloud. So cloud has become more cheap for oh. the businesses. Okay. Okay. Cloud. <laughs> so yeah. all these ELT mechanisms, they want to maintain on the cloud so that they want to cut short their cost and then okay. Uh, especially with the financial institutions and healthcare institutions, they are not going into the cloud at this moment because okay. of security and compliance. Okay, so because okay. they are worried. But regarding the pharmaceuticals uh, and telecom and retail, they've already entered into the cloud. Okay, because okay. Uh, they don't have much uh, compliance requirements to be satisfied, and that is the main reason why it is evolving. It is still evolving. Okay, this ELT okay. is still evolving. There would be a lot of mechanisms that's going to change during the course of time at this moment you could see almost 10 to 15 percent of companies are are, uh, are evolving into the ELT but uh -huh. it is a it's a big stage another five to ten more years it will take time to get into a perfect picture like ETL but when it comes to the data speed mm -hmm. agility the ETL is better okay say for an example ETL is nothing but you transform and then load all the data yeah. is ready and then you apply your rules with help of aggregations okay it's very mm -hmm. easy uh, and the yeah. generation of the reports will be very fast but ELT it does not the case ELT takes yeah. some time okay yeah. like for an example if you take the Google Google is having its own uh, big query okay which have the abilities of ELT abilities so it takes certain amount of time and then generate Okay. So wherever the businesses do not want to worry about uh, the time, okay, mm -hmm. they will be using the CLT mechanisms. The flexibility okay. will be added. Okay. So this is in in general the difference between the ETL and the ELT. Okay. Now, uh, in in every company, we we'll try to establish a warehouse. Now, have you come across uh, this OLTP and OLAP? Any anywhere did you come across? Yeah, I heard it, but I don't remember what it is. Okay, I fine. Heard. That's fine. Very good. Okay. See, this extract, transform, and load is exclusively useful only for the OLAP, but not for the OLTP transactions. See, okay. what is meant by OLTP? What is meant by OLAP? I will tell you right now. So, OLTP okay. is nothing but the online transaction processing where the data is volatile. That means it contains only or it has only the updated information. Say, for an example, you have gone to the ATM machine, right? Okay. So you have withdrawn amount one, two, three, four, five consecutive days, and you go for the balance check, okay? Mm -hmm. Or it will show you only the last four to five days. It doesn't show you the last one month, right? Yeah. Why? Because that is meant only for four to five days. So these, these are nothing but OLTP, online transaction processing. Go for a railway ticket, okay? okay. You go and uh, book a railway ticket. You can go and update it doesn't show the history it only shows the latest information so yeah, for all these process. type of yes yes for all these type of uh, transaction processing we go for the OLTP now with the help of the OLTP we can able to uh, improve the operation to a certain extent but is it going to be helpful for the business to drive the decisions that is the mm -hmm. question that comes into the picture mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. For an example, you are running a company. I'm also running a company. If I want to improve my company, I want to look at my history, right? Yeah, yeah. If I, I need I need to look at the history and then analyze and then take a decision whether in which direction uh, do I need to proceed. Okay, so that is the mm -hmm. main reason for going for a data warehouse. A oh. warehouse is nothing but collection of all the past. Okay, history. which yeah mm. history past is nothing history. but history history which gives information okay for the mm. business to take a decision so how the information is given with the help of etl okay okay with the help of etl the information is provided uh, to the target database on top of the target database we use a different visualization tools or intelligence tools to form the reports and show to the business okay mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. how the consider that is the reason why i said it could be data warehouse or it could be data warehouse. So when I say so data o warehouse, yeah, okay, sure, so go ahead. O OLAP is a data warehouse, you are saying? O -L -A -P. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. OL means online analy analytical processing. When I say analytical, analytical means it is a summary. Okay, okay, okay. aggregations. Okay. That is nothing. That's why. Okay. If I go to an Excel, can I write it directly on the cell with a formula? I cannot write. I need to no. use is equal to and go for SUM sum and then look for the additional cells. The same day here, mm -hmm. uh, we will do the uh, aggregation on the measures. Okay. We mm -hmm. do the aggregation on the measures, summarize them in the form of a reports and then show to the business okay. to take a decision. So that is the main reason this OLAP, the name has come into the picture. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so they so for all labs, so there are, there are varieties of all labs. Okay, we don't we do not worry. We have desktop all lab, uh, hybrid all lab, relational all lab, etc. etc. We don't go all this into details, but you just understand the difference. All lab, mm -hmm. OLDP. Okay, and for maintaining the all lab, we we go for the data warehouses or a data mart. Okay, okay. now what do you mean by a warehouse and a mart? What is the methodology in data warehouse? We go for a Top down approach. Okay. okay. Top down. We build okay. a top down approach. In a data mark, we go for a bottom up approach. What that is the other thing? Data. Uh, what do you call it? Um, data warehouse and other is data? The mark. 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 Okay. M A R T. M A R T. M A R T. Okay. Mark. Mm -hmm. Data mark. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we know the right, the father of uh, data warehouse, Kimball. And Inman, Bill Inman and Ralph Kimber. So these two guys have developed this methodology of so top down and bottom up approach. See, you can develop a mart and then integrate all these marts to form an enterprise. Mm -hmm. Or you can develop uh, a methodology for the enterprise and then segregate into their marts. So it's up to the convenience, okay, to the okay. business, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the times we go for the marts. Or sometimes it depends on the business. If they want to go for the enterprise, then we design it for the business, or like a data warehouse. And that's okay. the reason the data warehouse and data mart comes in the picture. And okay. here, when you develop, or when we are developing a model to capture the data into data warehouse or data mart, the ETL comes into the picture. Until then, we don't use the ETL. Okay. okay? Uh, so for any for any projects, we'll be having a business requirement analysis. And then once we have this requirements analysis, we go for a database, right? We will we will choose the database. Okay. Now, which database I need to choose? This it all depends on the business. The business say my money is this one. So with mm -hmm. this functionality, with this requirement, can I able to buy Oracle or can I be able to buy SQL Server? That's, that's how true. that's how we will be uh, thinking from the high level perspective and go for the uh, purchasing of databases. And we will also see the capability and capacities of SQL Server, Oracle, mm -hmm. and DB. There are so many things. Okay, and Oracle is the pioneer in all these uh, databases as of now. And that's how we'll come into the database. Now we 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 come across the database. Now how to design the logical? Okay, we need to design the logical. How many tables? What tables needs to be designed? Okay, that we will come into the picture in the form of dimensions for okay. any business requirement. We uh, first form dimensions, how many dimension tables with respect to number of uh, columns that we come across and then we design the facts. Okay, facts are nothing but the measures. Measures okay. are nothing but the numerical values. Okay, oh. and these, uh, some of these numerical values will uh, act as a key performance indicators. Okay, we call it as KPIs. Okay, okay. these aggregation of the numericals form as a KPIs where we show into the dashboards. 
Okay. Okay. So first we design the database design and then the number of tables comes into the picture. After that, we go for the ETL build. Okay. So mm -hmm. what are the different types of data sources, whether it is a homogeneous or heterogeneous? Okay. Now, uh, if it is a homogeneous, what are the different varieties? What is the length size? What is the size? Everything will come into the picture. We will be looking into the volumes. We will be looking into the archivals. We will be looking into the different, different processes. So it all takes into the consideration into the ETL building test. It's not only the building, right? Say for an example, you develop a code. You design it for two months or three months. Okay, fine. After that, what happens? The volume grows. Okay. Right? Every okay. day, the number of transactions increases, the volume goes up. So, we'll be having a, a capacity in the mind to look at the volumes also. So, oh. after every two months, what, what should the archival process, how the archival process should develop, or how to increase the archival process? So, all these things will be, will be um, thinking at the back end, and everything will cost for the client. Okay. Okay. Here, we will come across the ETL build and test. Anyway, you you know about the testing definitely it could be yeah. a manual or the automation anything that will yeah. be applied for testing and then yeah. the report report is a different story it is more yeah. purely there are varieties of uh, tools available in the market the same yeah. way like yeah. SAP Vivo, we have uh, oracle tools are there ibm tools are there cognos is there so there are so many tools available where mm -hmm. we can generate the reports and here the generation of reports is very simple it's, mm -hmm. it's it's an aggregations okay it's very simple we will okay. be doing the aggregations and then we will be performing the dimensional modeling into a, a product or into a three dimensional x y z dimensions and then pulling the different uh, columns into the report pages to get the information it's it, it's awesome. uh, decent oh report you are telling about the reporting right yes that uh, is the reporting okay. Oh, right now we are doing in Jira, like whatever the bug uh, we create or no, something. No, no, no. Jira so is not for, no, no, no. Uh, Jira is only for tracking. It's not for yeah. uh, the business no. intelligence report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. That For that, we use Excel. We just all do oh. all the reporting in Excel and doing Excel. That. Okay. Yeah. Jira is like a bug tracking for testing, or it's yeah. like a management tool where we can uh write our user stories write our epics yeah yeah and then and then try to get all this information that is a different story okay okay so, that's so here report here reporting how we are doing reporting here uh, in, informatica? in informatica there are no reportings in informatica it is only ETL tool okay? okay okay we can we can schedule our jobs batches to run so that it will load into the database we don't have any reporting into the informatic. Informatic is only a purely ETL tool. Okay. Okay. So okay. one, uh, if Informatica, if Informatica does not able to handle the reporting, there are so many other uh, uh, reporting tools are available. You said Excel is one of the reporting tool, but the problem is the data. Yeah. The Excel, and that's the reason why the Power BI has come to the picture. It's a very good uh, visualization tool that you can able to do the aggregations. The same way, like in Excel. The Power mm -hmm. BI has the capability of uh, loading, or you can use the Tableau. Okay, yeah. Tableau is one of the beautiful uh, data visualization tools. It's not only purpose for the BI, but also for the analytics also. Okay, so Tableau is one of the leading markets uh, BI tools in the picture. There are so many click is there, uh, uh, Alteryx is there. there. Are so many tools available in the market. Okay. So I think since you are into the ETL, so do not worry about the reporting. You can use any tool. So. Once we load the data into the data warehouse, okay, the backend yeah. is the database. Uh, we need to connect. Once we open the tools, we need to connect to this database, and then uh, what do you say? We need to upload all the necessary tables or the columns, whatever we want, to do the necessary summarizations, and okay. then add a little, little bit of logic to add the aggregations, and then showcase in the form of a KPIs for the business. That's it. Okay. So and, and those reporting tools are having their own synchronization, and then uh, apart from the synchronization, they do have what do you call uh, report. I mean report bursting. That means every day the report should uh, go to the so and so email so that the necessary clients will have a look and see the figures on the reports and then take a necessary decision. So like this, we can do all these okay. things with the reporting. Okay. Now. 
Now, when when we come across uh, data extraction, okay, so that is in term about the data warehouse and the data marts. Now okay. we come across the data actual extraction. Uh, have you heard about uh, any XML files, any text files? Yeah, Did yeah, yeah. XML. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We have to import the XMLs uh, to yes. uh, to run the jobs and also. Absolutely. So Informatica supports varieties of uh, sources like ERP sources, SAP sources, text files, flat files, databases, whatever. Co maybe. Cobol it connects, files. Yeah, yeah, it connects to different uh, connection mechanisms and we can import all the data, whatever you want. And then, okay, so I just mentioned some examples over there. So once we import, okay, all this mm -hmm. data, so that is nothing but the data source, we call it as, okay, EDL, mm -hmm. the E okay. is nothing but the extract. extract extract is mm -hmm. nothing but the data source okay? okay but here uh we should be very careful because a lot of uh, uh, information we are directly accessing so there will be a resistance to the so many vendors in uh, giving the access so it depends upon how the relationship between the clients and other vendors so okay. they may give access in the form of use they don't give access directly to the databases or they may send whatever the information you want in the form of a uh files the files can be delimited or a comma yeah. separated or a text files or whatever may be the case okay yeah. so that uh it it, it it acts a little bit of uh, what do you say a data sensitivity information right and that's the main okay. reason yeah. so we call it as if we are sourcing the data from two type of sources of the same type we call it as a homogeneous Okay. When we are sourcing more than one type of source, we call it as a heterogeneous. Okay, that is okay. the difference between the homogeneous and heterogeneous data source. Mm -hmm. um, so that is uh, really when we are sourcing, we just source whatever the data we want and we do not write any logics. So that is nothing but the data sourcing. Okay. 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 And then once we load whatever the information we want from the source, we will apply some transformation rules. Okay, based on the business information. Okay. Okay. This is nothing but the data cleansing. Okay. Data, data, okay, data cleansing. In, from a high level perspective, we call it as a data cleansing. But we we match different data. Uh, the data grows horizontally, the data grows vertically. Okay. How to okay. uh match two different sources to grow horizontally? When I say grow horizontally, I combine in one data source some 10 columns, the other data source five columns into a one more target. So my data grows horizontally, right? 10 plus okay. 15 columns. But if I want to go data vertically, we use a different type of mechanism called a union transformation. So same type of, so that the number of rows will increase without affecting the number of columns. So that is nothing but the horizontal and vertical. Okay. 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 So we call in term, this terminology is nothing but the data merging. And now data merging, okay. data merging we call. So these are the technical terms. Okay. Definitely this may help you. Did you merge the data? Okay. So when you are merging, what are the different types of issues we come across? What type of joints we need to write, okay? So a SQL also plays a crucial role over here because a lot of concepts that has been incorporated from SQL to Informatica, okay? All the transformations, whatever we are, we are going to use in uh, Informatica are embedded from the SQL. Say for an example, if I want to join two sources, I'll be using a join in the SQL, right? two tables if you want to join the same way here i will be using the joiner transformation uh, oh. okay so that is the main reason sql adds a little bit of advantage if you know a sql it's okay otherwise i will i will touch base whenever it is required so we don't write so we don't need to write sql like it generates automatically uh, there are two possibilities it generates automatically at the same time it gives an additional flexibility for us to incorporate to the sql also Okay, that okay. means when I join to transformations, it, it automatically joins and write. Okay, but we can apply a default filters by writing okay. by touch facing the SQL. Okay, but uh, not in all the transformations, but uh, in one of the transformations, the all other transformations doesn't require like expression transformation, like um, an um, uh, union transformation need not be necessary. Automatically takes care the tool will itself takes care of how to join. I mean how to union okay so that is from the data transformation purpose. and then there is one more called data scrubbing so when i say data scrubbing eventually say for an example if you are running a bank in two to three countries 
every country is having a different format of maintaining the data, right? Say for an example, in India, we maintain the customer ID in 10 digits, but in mm -hmm. Australia, they maintain in 11 digits, okay? Yeah. In some other yeah. country, they maintain in 12 or 13 digits. So it's very difficult for us when we're integrating with, with uh, different uh, formats and it looks clumsy for the decision maker, right? So we, we mm -hmm. need to standardize, okay? Okay. We need to standardize into a particular format. For all these standardizations, we apply at the data cleansing. Plus, uh, unnecessary data also we will be eliminating, okay? okay. Uh, in the data cleansing. So all these things will come under a part of a data transformation in 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 a, in a whole, okay? So okay. we have the data extraction, data transformation, and then the final one is the data loading. The loading can be a flat file, okay? You can load to a flat file or you can load to a database. It depends upon your own requirement. Okay. Okay, and then we can also apply some data aggregations. I told you, right? How we yeah, aggregate yeah. in the reports. We yeah. can also do the aggregations through the ETAs. Okay, mm -hmm. like uh, grouping, if I group, group a product, get the sum of information or group by sub product, get the sum of the sales information. Okay, okay. like this we can also do the aggregations in the informatica itself. So okay. in a whole, from a high level perspective, they are extract, transform, and load. So these are the different types of processes. And now I would like to show one diagram so that you will have a fair amount of idea. Are you able to see my screen now? Yeah. Showing a Are you able to see the screen now? Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, in Informatica, I mean, this is nothing but the extract. I told you about the different types of sources, right? Database, XML, flat files, whatever. Maybe these are the sources, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And then there are so many client tools we have, Informatica, okay? This is nothing but the Power Center client. Okay, oh. and this client will having repository manager is one one part, mapping designer, workflow manager, workflow manager. I will tell you all this once we enter uh, deeply about one by one topic. And then the main heart of the informatica is nothing but the architecture. We call it as a domain. Okay. And I, I can't here, see. Uh, sorry, sorry. I can't see the other screen. What was before? I, I can see the only that thing, the agenda thing. Oh, I really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How about? Now I can see, yes. Okay, fine, fair enough. So, yeah, this is a whole high level picture of an Informatica power center, okay? This is the architecture of Informatica. I will tell about the architecture once we start about in detail. What is my integration service repository service? And then this is the extract, the different types of sources. We do have the database, it could be XML or flat files, and then how we load into the target so we will be using the different types of transformations all the logics this is exclusively important for the developer perspective okay so we'll have different types of transformations and we will write one by one logic in order to extract the data from different sources and then write into the load but how does it extract with the help of this informatic architecture that is the integration service and depository service 
and then i mean i will talk about this too in in the next class about the architecture but it gives a fair amount of idea about the different uh, client tools here if you see the power center client we call it as an okay these are different tools we have the repository manager it's for creating the users and the groups mapping designer is for creating the template like a skeleton like uh, if you open the microsoft word you will be getting different templates right the word templates we can use it the same way this is a mapping designer is like a template we prepare all the skeleton with having the source target different types of transformations but the data doesn't move but how the data does uh, will move it comes to the workflow manager here we have the actual data once we run the workflow manager a particular workflow the data actually moves from the source to the target with the help of the integration service and then workflow monitor monitor is nothing but when a particular workflow is executed we can see whether the workflow has been success uh, fade or still month so this is only for viewing the workflows so that is a workflow monitor so this is a very high level view about the the uh, data of informatica now you asked about the data warehouse right yes initially so this is the different types of etl process we okay and we load into the data warehouse so when i say etl process we use informatica extract mm -hmm. all the different types of uh, sources it could be files customer relationship management or enterprise resource planning sources it could be erp sources or a database uh, okay anything so we load to the etl process into the data warehouse see in the data warehouse we can see the data marts okay these data marts are nothing but the small small subject areas it can be a data mart or it can be a data warehouse okay it depends upon how you design depending upon the business once it is being loaded and then we will be using for reporting or data reporting and whole app analysis see okay. i talked about the term the whole app yeah. the whole app yeah. comes into the picture over here yeah so without having this it's i mean without having the history now when i say history so we should i mean we will talk about how to capture the story changing dimensions okay we do have a series type 1 type 2 and type 3 so that uh, how how the batches whether it should be incremental load or it can be a uh, full snapshot load so there are different types of batches in the data warehouse it all depends on the type of data what we receive from the source if you are receiving the full batch we load it as a full or if you are receiving only a part then we load it as a incremental load so if you want to do the incremental load so the mechanism the development mechanism will be different so what needs to do that we will be doing with the help of an example once we start to enter into the transformation okay, okay. so uh no, this one okay okay uh Vashali, so this is an introduction session so these are the topics that have been covered okay um, do you have any questions um no not right now okay so the so, I, I will show you mm -hmm. okay so i'll get the recording of this right mm -hmm. okay okay Um, so what are the so, i mean i uh, i just want to know what i'm what we are getting into like uh, the slavers wise uh what we are capturing the each day like uh, can we get like slavers something in a table what we are doing today and what we will do tomorrow like that uh that is you are asking about the agile process uh uh, no, I'm just asking about the codes, how it go, how it's go, how it will go. Like it is for 40 days, right? Covering for the 40 days. Yeah, okay. That's what yeah. Okay, you're talking about the course content. Fine. One yeah. moment. Let me work on the course content.
uh, I cannot able to share the screen of this one. Okay. In that screen, I think you might heard about the general concepts with terminology, right? Yeah. That's today I have covered almost uh, 75%. And okay. tomorrow I will start with the IPC architecture. Okay. So when I say IPC architecture and components, I may take around roughly around two more days. Okay. Not more than that. And then the client tools will take, say, each transformation will take one day. So it will deal with almost 10 to 12 transformations. Okay. okay. So it can comes to almost 12 days plus another three more days for additional homeworks, what we do. And then the workflow manager also comes into the picture. So we, okay. we are going another, to install install the Informatica, right? Uh, in between. Yeah. Uh, okay. that we will uh, that we will let you know how to do all this stuff okay because i need to consult with the department and let you know about all this stuff okay okay uh okay and then we will do with the workflow manager different types of sessions tasks and etc for this also it will take roughly around uh, 10 to 12 number of days so in overall the advanced concepts it will take around uh, four to five days so comes to around 30 to 32 days Okay. okay, and okay. Me, okay. in the middle, we will teach about uh, the concepts of uh, data warehousing, about the ACDs, because it's very uh, difficult to understand without knowing those concepts to incorporate the logics in okay. the informatica. Okay? okay, so that is the main reason. See, we can we can also do a short course for ten to fifteen days. Doesn't make any sense for me. Okay, so that is the reason why when they have approached, I. I told about minimum around 30 to 40 number of days, but it depends upon beauty and the candidate. If the candidate knows a little bit, then I can speed up. If the candidate wants to know for the basics, then it will take at least minimum 30 number of days. Okay. Okay. Okay, Vashali, then I'm yeah. ending for the today. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. And, Thank and what and what's your name? I I'm sorry, I, I didn't. Uh, ask my you. name is Murali. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have been into this industry for almost 13 years, and especially in Informatica for almost 12 years. Oh, and now okay. I'm I'm working on the data analytics side. Okay. Oh, so okay. that's how I come across this Informatica on different varieties of tools. So I use Abinitio Data Stage as an EPL and even Penta. It's an open source tools. But okay. I found, but I found Informatica is is the best one among them, which can be easily to uh what do you say to dissect identify the problems and as well as easy to understand also and that's the reason i prefer informatica and then even on uh, the reporting set i work with quite i mean four to five tools like sap bureau obe and then ibm cognos and then click and tap to and power bi so i work on this uh, reporting tools so depending upon the variety of the projects i uh, have been given an opportunity to work on those areas Okay. Uh, apart from this, we will we will also know about the different concepts like data governance, data quality, master data management, reference data management. See, these are all the terminologies we come across when we are doing the ETL. Okay, okay. So I will also cover all these topics. That is the reason. The my agenda looks only five topics, but all these will be adding up once we start developing the uh, mappings mean the workflows okay so i will okay. teach about these concepts where and where it is appropriate so that uh, there won't be any separate sessions for all these topics to take so which will be a kind of a boring for you guys i mean at the early early stages so whenever the appropriate scenario touches so i will try to explain those topics so that it will be easy for you to grasp and understand okay okay right thank you Vashali. have a great day hi Murli. Yeah. Uh, are you able to hear me Yes. Hey, hi, Murli. Sorry, my name is Nikhil. I have joined a bit late and I was on and off due to some network issues. So I was mm -hmm. going through your session and uh, thank you for uh, giving this beautiful session and it was really very informative. So I want to know about the access. So while, uh, you know, if I'll, if I'll choose to go with the, with the course, so how will I practice? Do I need some access or will I be getting some access for the Informatica tool or will you be helping on that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm in talks with the management over here for providing the access, and they will definitely they will let you know for 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 how to access. Okay, do not worry about those. Okay. Okay. Because okay. And I heard. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Please go on. Yeah, please go. No, on. In, initially, we were not doing a little bit of practice because we are focusing on the architecture, and then we enter into the clients. So it will take another three to four more days. We need to cover all these topics, and then we enter into a simple. 
uh, development. Okay, at that time we need the informatica. Mean okay. Meanwhile, I will talk to the manager over here to to supply the informatica. Okay. Okay, and I heard uh, the total uh, days of duration will be around forty to forty-five days. No, uh, it's between thirty to forty. Okay. Thirty to forty days. Okay. Thirty to okay. forty. Okay. Do not worry about that because uh, it. It takes even 100 number of days if you keep on extending, but that is not yeah. I understand. Problem. I understand. Yeah. So so do do you uh, are you taking any uh, consecutive classes again from tomorrow or so? Uh, that I will let you know. Okay, because I, I will I mean I will be getting the feedback from them about you guys whether it will be really and then from then onwards we will continue. Okay. 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 And just one last last question. Um. I am basically on Eastern time. What time you will prefer to go with your uh, sessions? Uh, I'll go with the Eastern time, Sami. <laughs> the the same time like uh, what you have started from uh, today? Yeah, it will be better by 8.30 EST will be better instead of 9. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm planning 8.30 so that okay. it will be finished mm -hmm. a bit early. Great, great. Yeah. Okay. okay. So no I issues. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. If at all is there any changes in the time, I will definitely inform the management to take the information from you. And so, based upon your convenience, I will I will also adjust myself. Okay. Thank you, Murli. Thank you very much. And yeah. about the fee structure and all, I have to talk to H four uh, Infosys, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I am no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just I just so, wanted to check. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. May I know what is your background so that it will be beneficial for me? Yeah. Sure. Um. So. I'm basically uh, working in uh, QA uh, region. So I have mm -hmm. a 10 plus years of experience in QA completely into the functional domain of uh, you know healthcare industry. Uh, mm -hmm. I have been working on various domains and uh, platforms like uh, mainframe automation, uh, various databases and all. And recently I have been switched to uh, data analytics. So I'm working on uh, data analytics part of one of my projects where I am using the tools like uh, SAP boards and SSRS. And uh, mm -hmm. Informatica is something like I always want to learn and know more about. And uh, that's what I am here. Oh, absolutely. So when you have touched with SSRS, did you touch with SSIS? Uh, no, because uh, it is because of the, you know, the project I'm working on, it is for the reports analytics and reports designing, which is the, why and that is why we are using SSRS. Uh, personally, um, I haven't uh, got the chance to work on SSIS, but I know bits uh, and pieces for uh, SSIS and all. But uh, I would like to learn more. Okay, absolutely fantastic to know about your background, Michael. Yeah, it's it's very good. I mean, since you have a very good background, it's very easy to understand, and that's the reason I also asked Vaishali to. No, to let her know her, her background and she said that she's very basic and that's the reason why i need to start from the basics no that's fine that's fine yeah. uh, it will be good if we can you know start uh, as per everyone's uh, um, yeah. um, flexibility and all so uh, that's fine and uh, what are the basic things you will be looking for before starting these sessions like basic law uh, basics of sql or do you need any other uh, languages as well I'm I'm sure nothing, there is no nothing, language nothing, required, nothing. but just wanted to check. Nothing else, only a SQL. Any SQL is fine. I mean, if you have a knowledge on the on, on mainframe, I mean DB2, that is also fine. Mm -hmm. Most yep. of the syntaxes will be the same. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean a, a little bit of pieces of vendors uh, 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 syntax. Apart from mm -hmm. that, everything will be the same. The terminology, like say for an example, in SQL Server, we use a different terminology. In Oracle, we use a different. It all depends on what yes, data yes. we use. Okay, yes, but of yes. course, that, nothing. So the concepts remains the same. I mean, merging, union, join. So join is very important concept in uh, mm -hmm. SQL. So we mm -hmm. are also using the joiners over here in Informatica. So the, most of them the same concept. So if you have a little bit of SQL join knowledge, it will be very easy to grasp over here. Else, I will try to explain the past ones. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, that will be good. And uh, I do have a good knowledge in uh, SQL since I am already uh, working on. A uh, few of the projects uh, for in SQL Server, DB2, and Oracle. So okay, yeah, it will be it will then, be good for me as well. Yeah, absolutely. Then it is going to be a piece of cake for you to understand this informatics. It's not. <laughs> it's I will not that. say yeah. like that, Murli, but definitely I'll try to you know uh, go ahead. So thank yeah. you very much, Murli. I will be looking forward for the next session where you will be at least give us a 
you know uh, uh, touch base with the informatica tool itself i would like to see i personally i haven't seen the informatica tool uh, all the okay. data warehousing etl jobs were uh, were done by sap boards uh, uh, under my you know projects so that will be something like uh, i would like to see definitely with pleasure nikhil okay i will talk to the management and get it to you as soon as possible okay do not worry about that it will be very very easy and you will see oh this is what okay i, I was thinking a different way that's how we will be coming to the conclusion once you know okay. about the source the target and the different types of transformations you come across okay. the line okay okay, okay? bye yeah. thank you nikhil and thank you for sharing thank for you joining. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you.